What name would you give legislation that nukes legal protections for your religious faith? Well, in Congress, they call it the Equality Act. Hi, I'm Stuart Shepard, and this is First Liberty Live. Thank you for joining us today, and we would like to meet some new people. So if you would, please like and share our videos. That's the best way for us to meet new people out there. We appreciate your being part of this effort to get the word out about these topics that are of interest to you. They're also going to be of interest to your friends. So again, remember to like and share. We do appreciate when you do that. With us today is my friend and colleague, Keisha Russell, who's an attorney here at First Liberty Institute. Hi, Keisha. Hi, Stuart. And we're going to talk about the Equality Act, and I'm yeah. Required by myself to put that in air quotes every time that I say it out loud because uh, because of the way it is. This is the third episode in our series called the madness uh, the madness of America's march toward equality and we thought this would be a good way to round out this special series. If you only heard about the Equality Act through the mainstream media, you'd think, well, this is great. It's landmark legislation. It's all about fairness. It's going to bring an end to discrimination. What's the problem, Keisha? Well, the problem is that, you know, the act really jeopardizes the fundamental right to religious liberty in the Constitution and our First Amendment. It nullifies a lot of the legal protection that religious Americans have in federal law. It forces religious organizations and individuals to violate their religious beliefs or face, you know, criminalization of those beliefs by the federal government and ultimately it really just exalts certain beliefs about um, marriage, sexuality, the sanctity of life over others and places any anyone who does not want to conform to progressive ideology um, in the crosshairs of the government and will criminalize those beliefs. In a very real sense, this is the way I always like to describe it, we have our First Amendment rights but efforts like this, activist efforts like this, are an attempt to put an amendment before the First Amendment, like a zeroth amendment mm -hmm. that would give rights that trump our religious freedoms as guaranteed by the founders, and that's not right, and it's not in the Constitution. Absolutely not. You're, you're right, you're right, Stuart. I mean, this particular act really just tries to nullify a lot of the religious liberty protections so that people can push progressive ideology and coerce others to accept it. Now, in many ways, the Equality Act really ought to be called the Equality or Else Act because of the extreme lengths that it goes, particularly to single out religious freedom. Mm -hmm. And I've got a graphic here that shows you this is straight out of the bill. This is off the congressional website. It shows the section where it specifically says the Religious Freedom Restoration Act, which was passed in 1993 and signed by Bill Clinton, that you can't use it to make a case against the Equality Act, and you also can't use it as a defense if someone comes after you under the Equality Act. Keisha, that is hardball. It is definitely hardball. I mean, the Religious Freedom Restoration Act, or RIFRA, as a lot of the lawyers call it, uh, was passed with nearly unanimous consent by the con by Congress in 1993 under the Clinton administration. Um, it was bipartisan, obviously, and so yeah. there's really no reason to nullify that protection um, under this act. And it was passed because even then, and that's been, what, decades ago now, mm -hmm. they saw that the First Amendment rights were being infringed upon, starting to be roughshod over, and they decided we need to put this into law to try to shore up our First Amendment freedoms under that under what the founders intend? Yeah, definitely. It's a recognition of how important religious liberty rights are because once religious liberty rights go, all the other rights um, are, you're, you're going to lose those very shortly after. And we've seen that in country after country all Absolutely. through history. Yeah. I, uh, we don't have to look far to find some real life examples of how this can play out. And the Supreme Court is currently hearing a case, they're considering a case, they heard mm -hmm. it last year, I think, mm -hmm. uh, out of a major city that was discriminating against adoption agencies, foster care agencies, that mm -hmm. sort of thing. Unpack that for us. What happened there? Sure. So in the case Fulton versus Philadelphia, there's religious op adoption agencies that have been serving the city of Philadelphia for nearly a century. And so what happens is the city of Philadelphia comes in and says, well, you have to agree to viol violate your religious beliefs, otherwise you can't serve children anymore. Now, what's really interesting about this case is that this particular adoption agency, even though it has these traditional beliefs, which is what the city is targeting, yeah. traditional beliefs about marriage, has never turned away any same-sex couple. So the government here can't even prove harm. Right, and so what that means is the government is oppressing this particular religious organization just because it knows what it believes about marriage and doesn't like it. And so this shows you sort of ultimately what can happen, you know, when if the Equality Act was to pass, that this would happen nationally. That now the federal government will be able to step into religious organizations that serve 
home, homeless shelters that, you know, address poverty, that serve immigrants, all of these, you know, service industries that religious organizations really help to um, help the burden of the government. You know, the government has, doesn't have to do as much if these religious organizations are serving. And so this would really impact these organizations, individuals, businesses, and ultimately will threaten the livelihood and economics of millions of Americans. And, and I'm thinking churches mm -hmm. as well as Bible colleges. Right. And you mentioned mission groups and that mm -hmm. sort of thing. All of those would, would likely be at least under the threat of challenges for employment law and all kinds of other things if this bad bill passes. Right, and ultimately what the difference is that in you know this Fulton versus Philadelphia case, which we should be getting a decision on that case from the Supreme Court in the next couple of months, but in that case, the, the adoption agency at least is able to go to court and advance its defense. Under the Equality Act, you will not be able to advance RIFRA as a defense. You know, it's completely writing that ability out. Now, RIFRA doesn't guarantee that any one party wins. It just gives you the opportunity to go to court um, and advance a defense under that act. So, now, uh, very dangerous. If you're watching this and you're thinking, well, how could anybody in Congress vote for something that singles out religion like this? Well, wait till you hear where this is in the process. Where is it in Congress right well, now? Well, it's already passed the House, um, and it was heard by the Senate Judiciary Committee just last week. Um, and so we'll have to see what happens um, and, and what happens if it gets on the Senate floor and it gets to a vote. Yeah, and that, that's a real concern because of this current split in the Senate. Mm -hmm. It could go either way. Mm -hmm. And if it does, it's going to be a problem for Americans all over. Yeah, certainly. I mean, the filibuster is, is, is a, um, a, a situation here that, that could impact whether this bill is passed or not. But we'll just have to see what happens. You can never really predict it these days. So. All right. So we've talked about this a lot of different ways. But I want to step back and just let you talk about the big picture. As you look at the impact that this bill could have all across America, what do you see? What do you see happening to this nation of ours? Well, we're talking about, you know, America's march toward tyranny. You know, that's the series that we're working on. And it's really important for people to see what this bill is actually doing and, and practice. It's telling you that certain beliefs and certain ideologies are supreme over others. And so what it's doing is really establishing uh, an ideological um, caste system in which certain beliefs deserve protection and others do not. Now, this isolates millions and millions of Americans who still hold religious beliefs or traditional beliefs about certain subjects and criminalizes all of those people, whether you commit any sort of volatile act or not. So it will control your speech, controls your association, it controls a lot of things. And I think that you know, all Americans should be concerned about this, no matter what party you belong to, no matter whether you're religious or not, because we know from history that once religious liberty is infringed upon by the government, all other freedoms will go. And you, you see that happening right now. You can't really control religion without also controlling speech, you know? And, and so it just it's just a slippery slope that continues to, to march on towards tyranny. And then America becomes unrecognizable. I heard an activist who supports this bill doing a, a mainstream media interview, and she said, oh, it's only opposed by a very fringe group of people. Not just fringe, but very fringe. And what you just described is it would literally have an impact on most Americans. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Everyone would be impacted by it in some way. I mean, it would affect the everyday lives of every single person. And, um, and by doing so, like I said, it would create a caste system that people who refuse to conform to progressive ideology will now become um, social outcasts and now be unable to serve in the community, be able to work in certain places in the community, private organizations as well as public. And uh, you, I mean, it would be a, a very big problem. All right, Keisha, thanks for your insights on this. Very helpful to hear all that. A little scary. Yes. Uh, definitely a cause for concern for those of us that care about religious freedom, but we will continue to keep an eye on that and we will let people know as this moves along. Thanks again, Keisha. Absolutely. Hey, uh, we wanted to uh, pass along to you a, a few things here before we, we close out. First, it really is so important to us that you like and share these videos. Uh, if, if these resonate with you, Again, your friends and family are also going to be interested in these topics and the way that they impact society. And it's good to have a trusted source that you can get this information from and know that it's reliable. So do click like, uh, share it with your friends, uh, even the ones that may or may not disagree. That's up to you uh, what you do with that. But it's good for people to hear a, a point of view on this that comes from the perspective of religious freedom. And also, if these resonate with you and if, if this is something, uh, these topics that we discuss, uh, 
resonate with you as something that you'd like to see changed in society, uh, we invite you to click on the big red donate button. Uh, we are a nonprofit organization, and generally, uh, this topic is a little different for us today, generally we're in the business of representing people whose religious faith has been uh, infringed upon and protecting them, and one important part of our work is they never get a bill from us, and that's only possible because of the generous support of people like you. So if, if you feel so inclined and if you feel led, please click on the big red donate button, and let me say thank you in advance from all of us. A year ago, First Liberty Institute raised the first challenge to government overreach under the pandemic, and that's going to be our topic next week. We're going to revisit with the pastor who just wanted to hold an Easter service a year ago in his parking lot yeah. with everybody in their cars all separated, and the mayor said no, and uh, we stood up for that pastor. We're going to find out how things have gone over the past year. So, Gisha, thanks again, and thank you. We'll see you next week right here on First Liberty Live. Done?